other off-schedule operation. We've had a system where we find new seats and flights availability for those customers, but I think oftentimes customers didn't necessarily know that that was the best option for them. What we wanted to do was create a system where they could actually see alternate options. The goal was to facilitate a better experience for our customers on how to get to their destination in an automated fashion on the channel of their choice. So we partnered with IBM and specifically IBM Cloud Platform to adopt their garage method, pair programming, test driven development. The original timeline was actually over a year. So American approached IBM and asked us if there was any way we could help them shorten that timeline. From the time that we started development on dynamic rebooking until the time that we actually had customers using it was about four and a half months. We were kind of cautious to release this product. We rolled it out to a limited number of stations across all the channels, and it really went flawlessly. We are now crossing into a zone of turbulence. Please keep your seatbelts fastened. In our business, hurricanes, storms, other natural events impact our customers on a fairly regular basis. What happened, and this is a true story, the hurricanes hit, and everybody said, this is ridiculous. Our customers were being impacted by the hurricanes immediately. Why are we mitigating risk of a traditional rollout when we have the power of the cloud? And this is exactly the scenario that our customers need this capability. We made the decision as a team that the tool needed to be turned on, and especially in the hardest hit areas. So we did. Having the confidence to just flip the switch really came out of the whole project from the beginning. This was a unique opportunity for us really to embed the business side right in with the technology team. Flight attendants, please prepare for landing. One of our expectations when we were moving to the IBM cloud was the scale and the hyperscale of cloud should relieve our normal concerns around infrastructure when we roll out an application globally. So when the hurricanes hit, we put that to a test and our confidence was there and the application worked flawlessly. I think people will now realize that these kind of activities and integration are much easier when we can use cloud technology and especially microservices, we can break problems into much smaller problems and those get much easier to wrap your head around and develop. This is the technology that we need to be adopting now in order to keep pace with our customer expectations. Good morning. How's everyone doing? I'll let you all get your headsets on. When I woke up this morning, I wanted to think about you know, what is, what is one thing that you're thankful for every time you wake up in the morning? It's something you're supposed to do as a daily affirmation. So I thought to myself, what am I thankful for today? And I was thinking to myself, and as I was going through and, and listening to uh, Roberto talk, I was like, I'm thankful that your English is better than my Spanish. So, um, welcome. I want to welcome everybody here for, uh, for really talking about and joining us around this journey to cloud that we're on. When I look at cloud and I think about how we've really evolved over time and we start thinking about probably one of the biggest flaws we had around cloud was thinking about the destination. We thought about where we were going and what, where we were going to get to. And what we did was, you know, back in the early days, we took cloud and we started lifting and shifting applications to the cloud very quickly. As a virtual machines, we lifted, we dropped them into the cloud. We thought this infrastructure was gonna solve everything that we had. We turned out that that wasn't necessarily the case. We never got the efficiencies, we never got what we wanted. So then we shifted ourselves over towards uh, more cloud native. We said, okay, we're gonna rip and replace everything. We're gonna build everything from scratch and we're gonna go completely cloud native. And that was gonna be our strategy. And we realized along the way that that became a very, very expensive uh, model as well. So now as we look at it, cloud is really about the journey. And just like as you look at a journey that you have when you go from A to B, you go from home to work, you really need some guideposts. I look at Waze as an example of how to be able to get there. Waze helps you navigate around congestion, around traffic, around accidents, misturns, dead ends, construction, especially here in uh, Buenos Aires, as we have right now. And so it's about the journey. 
and we need help to be able to get along that. So that's really what I want to take you on, is around how we can help around the journey to cloud that we have. But first off, I wanted to just take a half step back and talk about where and why are we going to there. The biggest thing about cloud is not about getting there or about the destination, it's about why we want to get there. And it's really about this digital transformation that everybody's on. It's about how do we add value and how do we really create business differentiation to our clients, to our business that we have. It's about reaching new clients, it's about adding new types of analytics, it's about providing a very personalized viewpoint into how we communicate and how we interact with our clients. And a lot of us don't have necessarily the, you know, the privilege of starting a, a startup from scratch or a very brand new company that can start be born in the cloud. So we have to be able to be able to move there. So it's about improving our top line and our bottom line. So how many people here know when AWS was first started? So 2006. So Amazon launched AWS in 2006. When was the iPhone launched? The very first smartphone was 2007. There you go. So about around the same time. Now when you look at a smartphone, I want actually, so someone here can put up a, their hand if someone here does not have a smartphone. It's probably zero. So we'll call this room 99.9% .9 penetrated. Everybody has one, everybody's been there. The market is saturated. So in those 12 years, they completely saturated the market on the iPhone space, or the smartphone, smartphone market. The cloud, 20%. So it's been 12, 13 years, and we're still only 20% of the way through. Only 20% of the enterprise workloads have actually moved to the cloud in one form or another, even if it's just a straight on lift and shift. So if the smartphone can move that fast, because that was about a destination, and like I said before, the cloud is about a journey. And there's gonna be a many pitfalls along the way. So why haven't we moved? I think we can take a step back and take a look at what are some of the pieces that we have? To me, I look at the first one here and it's probably the best but also the worst phrase in IT that we have today. It depends, right? It depends upon the workload. It depends upon the storage requirements. It depends upon the data. It depends upon the security. There's so many uniqueness about every single workload that we have out there that we have to be able to take you know, into account each and every one of them for every single workload we have. The second one here is that no matter how much we look at trying to create a single vendor strategy around cloud, it's just not the case. Recent studies show that the average enterprise out there is between seven to 12 clouds when you include SaaS, you include public clouds, and everything else like that. That's a tremendous amount of work that has to go into it. And then obviously it's the people, it's the skills. Where are we getting those skills to be able to help people move into this you know, cloud journey that we have around us. So that's really what's preventing, you know, a lot of us that are there. So as we start taking a look at, well, what are some of the successful ones doing that they have? What are some of the methodologies, the strategies that they have with moving to cloud that they have? The first one here is that they really create a, a mentality of that they want to build something once and deploy it anywhere. This is an adoption of a microservice strategy you know, we first heard about it, you know, during the, you know, cloud native build days. But it's you want to be able to build something once and then place it where it makes most sense. Whether it's cost, whether it's security, whether it's the data placement, the proximity of applications to your clients. There's a lot of things that go into place, but you don't want to write something every single time you want to be able to put it and optimize it for a place. The second one is embracing the multi-cloud. Leveraging this, being able to create yourself a strategy around how do you deploy, secure, govern, and provide compliance across all of these. If you don't embrace it, your CSO, your chief security officer, will stop it. They'll stop it one way or another because it is the reality and it is something that's there and we all have to embrace and accept the fact that we will have multiple clouds. 
And then the other one too is reaching out. How are we hiring? What is the culture behind our, our organizations? What is our organizational structure? We have to break down those traditional pillars that we have and start creating horizontal teams with multiple disciplines within there. The embrace of SRE or site reliable, reliability engineering is very key to successful clients that are out there. So as we look at you know, moving into this, is what are the benefits that clients have seen with this? And if you look at the clients that have adopted versus not adopted, new ways of thinking about cloud, there's a tremendous amount of differentiation between the leaders and the laggards, right? I look at this as, well, we're gonna increase quality, significant increase in quality. We're gonna increase and decrease our you know, cost reduction. We're gonna reduce the overall cost that we have. But more importantly, is how our users feel about us, how our users interact with our technologies, how our employees are actually engaging with it. Because ultimately, in the end, it matters about client retention, attracting new clients and being able to retain those clients. And a true digital transformation strategy can really get us there. And that's really what it's about. What is your strategy as you look forward and as you bring your journey to cloud? And that's really where we want to be able to build it once, embrace multiple clouds, and really truly look at the skills and the culture you have within your organization to get you there. So now as we look at the journey to cloud and really the motions, right? That was about the strategy, right? Strategy is all great, but what are the actions that we actually have to do? The actions that, what are the things we need to do on a daily basis to be able to move ourselves there and be able to get ourselves, right? There's a simple move. Right? This is around migrating applications and modernizing those applications that we have. You want to be able to build upon those applications. You don't necessarily have to rip and replace and start from scratch, but you want to be able to add functionality. You want to be able to add AI. You want to be able to add new insights for, for clients. You want to be able to add new interactions that they have within you. So you want to be able to build these new types of services and capabilities on top of it. And then finally, as you go there, the thing which a lot of us don't want to think about, but we all do, is what's going to happen on day two. We get this brand new application up and running. How are we going to manage it? How are we going to make sure it stays secure? How are we going to be able to utilize this capability over the long period? And it's around managing this application across these multiple environments that we have. So from an IBM perspective, we look at this as a complete and total iteration. You have to start slowly. The journey is about that first turn, that first time you get into the car, getting yourself going, and then you iterate from there. It's about creating yourself that first level of experience and rethinking the people, the process, and the technology of it. But at the cornerstone of it, what we believe is how you're going to integrate those capabilities, those actions that you have we believe is going to be one of those key aspects of success and failure. And that's what I want to take you through here today. So moving on to the first aspect that we have, build and move your applications. The challenge that we have, everybody's been given a mandate. The mandate comes from the top, the CEO, the CIO, CTO, move to cloud, move, move, move. We all look at it and we say, well, yes, but. We've got these large monolithic applications that have been building over the last 10, 15, even 20 years now that are big, they sprawled, and we don't know how to be able to start looking at them. They have a very centralized deployment model and it takes us months to be able to change anything. We're very slow when it comes to being able to update any of these types of applications. And our development operations become very siloed. So this is where we start from. And we're told, move to cloud. And so as we look at it, we're all being told this. So as we look at it, we want to be able to look at what are the pieces we need to do. First off, which I strongly urge you to look at, is modernizing those applications. There's tools, there's resources that are out there that can actually take a look at these big monolithic applications and enable you to start breaking them apart. Start taking a look at how can I create microservices out of my existing applications. 
it's so tempting for us to say, I'm going to build this from scratch. I'm going to start new. But what you're doing is you're rebuilding all the business logic. You're rebuilding a lot of things that are already there that you can utilize and be able to get yourself there much faster, much more quickly than you have. And then as you do this, is how do I take those microservices that I broke this application apart, and how do I deploy it in a very cloud-native way? And IBM, we believe that containers and open technologies are going to be the technology of the future. That's the way that they're going to be deployed. It's the way they're going to be governed. It's the way they're going to be secured. And open technologies is the only way that we believe is going to be the long, create the longevity that we need for these applications as they move into the cloud and across whatever cloud you want to be able to deploy into and a set of tools that are associated to it. And then the last one here is creating a very diverse agile culture around development and DevOps. You can say DevSecOps, you can say SRE, you can say whatever you want, but you need to be able to adopt an agile culture and a horizontal culture that can bring across a multiple types of disciplines as you build these applications, deploy them and run them. So around application modernization, we believe this is really the way to be able to get yourself there the fastest. But at the cornerstone, as you start building all these microservices and you start deploying all of them, you create and split your applications into all these, you know, we started with tens and hundreds of applications. We're now at hundreds and thousands of microservices. So the biggest problem now is how do we integrate these? And we say, we want to integrate it. We want to use traditional software, traditional techniques. A lot of us out there have an ESB still for some of this, right? Very centralized, centralized deployment, centralized governance, very monolithic again in there. And we all use very pinpointed products. I need MQ for queuing. And these pinpointed products have not given us the agility that we need for this next wave of applications or the microservice way. So we believe that there's a concept around agile integration as we look at it. And it starts with the people. It starts about decentralizing your integration requirements, being able to push workflows down into the business, down into the developer that we have within there. You can still have the overall centralized governance, security, and management of that, but you want to be able to create yourself a modular approach to creating integrations of these different microservices that we have. And we believe that that's going to come from what's considered in the market now today is a hybrid integration platform. It's not one product. It's not one capability. It's about the patterns of integration. Sometimes you want to move a file. Sometimes you want to connect to a service. Sometimes you want to be able to create an API around that. Sometimes you need to push it external. Sometimes you need it internal. And so you need a whole set of capabilities that you need to be able to be able to manage uh, and deploy some of these capabilities. And I'm excited to have uh, Telefonica is going to be up here afterwards. I'm excited to listen to them. They're going to be talking about their API journey as they looked at you know, creating themselves an API strategy as an overall way to give them access and security into their overall infrastructure. Then the third one here is around management. We've got, if you look at the existing infrastructure that's there today or the existing ways that we manage, we've got network monitoring, we've got application monitoring, we've got storage monitoring, we've got security patches and fixes. We've got different ways to be able to deploy things, whether it's on VMs, whether it's traditional installs, or whether if it is you know, containers that are out there. And as we move to these thousands of microservices as we get in there, the volume of challenges that we have, the volume of data is going to explode. As we move to multiple clouds, it's going to explode. If you have one single monitoring capability for every type of problem that you have, whether it's storage, network, application, what you have then is you multiply that across multiple clouds is you get yourself an untenable problem that you have. You need to be able to begin to integrate these across. And there's been some early 
you know, developments in this over time as we've been integrating logs and being able to do log analysis, it becomes very backwards looking. What happens, therefore, I want to be able to look to see what's happening and being able to create correlation. We need to be much more predictive about that and be able to look at all the interdependencies that exist within there because it's going to become more and more difficult for that. So challenging yourself and looking at day two is going to be part of it. So as we look at doing this is really going back to some of the basics on the business value and looking at it from an application perspective and really the dynamic monitoring that you need to be able to have around it. Creating yourself a consistent way of looking at applications, microservices, the security, the patches and everything else that you have and adopting an open management platform. Something which can feed data into other uh, systems or be able to accept data from any system. I think that's going to be very key that's out there. So as we look at how we want to be able to do that, so IBM is really looking at this in a slightly different way and trying to be able to give technology to move ourselves along the move, build, and manage aspect that's out there. So what we're introducing here, and to be honest with all of you, this is the first time that we're actually talking about this publicly. It's right here in Argentina. The IBM Cloud Packs. What the IBM Cloud Packs are is really a full package solution for clients to be able to run middleware on any cloud. It provides you with a container platform. It provides you with all the services that are needed to deploy that middleware to be able to deploy those capabilities as well as the middleware and open source components that are needed to be able to perform that task. So think of it as a complete package set of capabilities in a modern container environment to be able to run those specialized services that you need on any cloud. So as we look at you know, what they can be able to do, they can run anywhere. Whether if it's Amazon, Azure, Google, yes, and I am from IBM. They can also obviously run on-premise in a modern cloud architecture. They're open and secure. We embrace all types of open source within these containers, within these uh, cloud packs. And what we're doing is we're also certifying the entire stack right through from the container platform all the way up to the application itself and the middleware itself. And as we welcome Red Hat into, uh, into our fold, we're going to be able to do much more. This is going to be able for us to be able to create fully certified stacks all the way from the operating system and the systems itself all the way up through to the middleware. We're, in, we're not stopping there. These are not bundles. These are not packages. What they are is fully consumable platforms. So what we want to be able to do is to share metadata between them, create a single user experience. As I talked about in the integration space, you want to be able to deploy an API, create an integration, use that same workflow to be able to create a Kafka workflow or a Kafka stream, for example. That's there. So we're elevating the concept of this to be much more enterprise ready, deployable on any cloud, and increase your time to market that you have. So as we look at the actual technologies that we have is building across, and I'm not going to go into depth on each one of these, but we've started with five. Really as you look at the main capabilities and technologies that you need that are out there, the first one is just for applications. As you look at your existing applications that run on premise, those monolithic traditional applications, what are the technologies that you need to be able to do that? We include things such as our transformation advisor, which allows you to do introspection on a Java application, any Java application, be able to break it apart into different microservices and gives you all the tools to then deploy that into a microservice model deployed on containers. Our cloud pack for data provides you with all the capabilities to be able to collect organize and analyze that data. It includes the database capabilities, the lineage, the governance around all that data, including the analytics. Integration, everything from data movement, APIs, integration, MQ, Kafka, 
I don't think I missed anything there. But all those capabilities under a single cloud pack and a single UI. Automation bringing workflow to the business user, whether it's business process management, operational decision management, enterprise content management, robotic process automation tasks, all together under a single platform. And then finally, wrapping this with management. And management isn't just about managing containers or managing VMs, it's about the whole environment that you have. Application monitoring, VM management, uh, container management as well, across multiple clouds. We launched multi-cloud management in October of last year. And what it enables us to do is be able to create a single viewpoint across multiple clouds of your cloud environment. All of this is built on a common set of services to be able to provide you with the deployment capabilities, the monitoring, all open technologies. We have a strong opinion on Kubernetes, Prometheus, Kibana, uh, Helm. Helm as the technology to be able to deploy complex middleware into this space, highly differentiated, and every one of these cloud packs leverages these common services as a way to be able to deploy it across all the clouds that I have out there. IBM Cloud, obviously, deploy into uh, Red Hat OpenShift. We can deploy it into Amazon, Azure, Google, OpenStack, and there will be more to come uh, in this space as well. So that's around the technology that we provide with you to be able to help you with this journey. The technology is there, it's available today. The journey, the reasons that are why, but taking a step back, why we want to be able to do this? It's around creating a better customer experience. It's about maximizing our revenue. It's about optimizing our cash flow, regardless whatever the technology is. If you want to be able to deploy blockchain and be able to optimize your cash flow using blockchain, we have examples and case studies across all of these different uh, industries and all these different use cases here of clients using cloud packs to be able to accelerate their journey on this. So as we look at what does IBM also provide you around this journey, the one thing which you're all here for is that you're all great IBM customers already. And I want to thank you for that. But we also want to be able to make sure that your investment stays protected. If you invested in WebSphere 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I think it's even older than that now, I think we had their 20th anniversary last year, you can leverage that technology, that code, those licenses to move to the next generation of cloud packs. This is not about something new or different, but it's about investment protection and about helping you move there in the fastest, quickest, cheapest way possible. We provide you with investment flexibility, so as you move to these cloud packs, it's not about I need X amount of one and Y amount of two, I'm actually being able to share these capabilities across the broader platform. And we're future-proofing this as well. The investment in open source, open source technologies and the communities that are out there, we believe as the future to be able to save yourself from these constant churn that we have. The one thing in IT and especially in the cloud era is the only constant is change. So this is an evolution of where we've been over the last 20 years and where we've come from, not a revolution. And so this allows you to be able to make that change, that journey, at the time and speed that you need to be able to have it within your own client space. So as you heard about American Airlines at the beginning, these are just some of the customers that we've been helping with this. One actually, I'll say reasonably local here, is Bradesco really in allowing them to be able to change the way that they ingest or bring new clients on board, to be able to speed that set of capabilities by providing new types of AI, speech recognition, to be able to attract and retain new sets of clients. Hertz, Westpac in Australia as well, they're modernizing their applications. They scanned their entire portfolio. Westpac has hundreds and hundreds of applications and about two thirds of these they were able to save and be able to provide microservices on there that they are now deploying onto containers. So a great, great story that we have some 
great case studies around if uh, you need to take a look at that. And of course, you're not alone. I talked about technology, but I also had talked a little bit about culture and resources and skills, because it's about the people that you have. IBM Garage Services allow you to be able to come in, be able to begin to really look at ideas that you need. And we've got a lot of different types of techniques. The Garage Method allows you to be able to start taking a look at your organization in a different way. A lot of us have these very pillared style organizations that we have. But what we can do is be able to start, look at, start looking for those champions within your organization. The champions of change, the people that want to do something different, that see cloud as a way to be able to get there and become much more agile, much more responsive to the business. And so we can help. And we've got partners out there, some great partners that are here today as well that can help you with that journey as well. And I want to thank the partners for showing up today. But as you look at your journey, just as we talked about ways at the beginning, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. It's about starting. It's about getting yourself started. And every single one of us has a different set of challenges. We start from a different place. And even if you left home, you can always get rerouted. So from an IBM perspective, we want to meet you where you are. This isn't about us having to start you from scratch and be able to have that. But we want to understand what part of that journey you're in, what part of the maturity life cycle you have in your journey to cloud, and we want to help you with it. If you've already started, you've already moved things, that's great. You have some experience, you have the scars, you have really that first piece to it, and you have a much greater understanding and appreciation for the work that it's going to cost. So I want to thank you for your time today. I think we've got a great speaker up next here around uh, some of the capabilities that we have. So I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you.